When the EU was looking to minimise the economic threat from the coronavirus, it was to these two it turned. Theirs was the personal drive to reach a compromise, a demonstration of their intent to try to solve Europe's problems where possible, as in their shared view about the current political upheaval in Belarus. Freedom of expression and the right to demonstrate must be guaranteed. Prisoners must be released and there must be a national dialogue to settle things peacefully in Belarus. For decades, the strength of the Franco-German relationship has been a given. Governments would come and go, but the two countries' shared political interests would remain. In effect, forcing ministers to work together for a common purpose. The personal dynamic between these two is clear. Despite the generational differences between them, the French president welcomes the analytical approach the chancellor brings to politics. Uh, that you can really in depth discuss the, this, uh, an idea uh, and a concept with her and you get an honest answer. And it's not a political one because there, it's not an ideological one. It's more really, okay, can this work or not? That last question is one many in Germany are asking now about the Trump administration's plan for NATO in Europe. Its decision last month to withdraw some of its forces from Germany has worried many. Now, some analysts say this poses a real dilemma for the French and Germans. Trump is destructive to world order. He is more than a dilemma, he's a danger. And to suppress that before the election is decisive. In visiting Macron at his Mediterranean retreat, Merkel is doing something few other leaders get to do. Because, some say, when she meets him, it's not just a photo opportunity, rather it is a meeting of minds. Dominic Kane, Al Jazeera, Berlin.